on CTV. Welcome to the Twitter Jabs too. My name is Aggie Oase and joining me this morning is Miss Elon Chiwumulo who is a teacher, a parent as well as um, a psychologist and she will be weighing in on the matter in regard to artists and musicians being banned from performing in schools and holding concerts and just like we mentioned earlier on the Twitter Jabs one um, this comes at a time when videos of you know artists, renowned artists Shiba Karunji, Winnie Waji, among other artists you know were circulating on social media and they were dressed skimply and this prompted the Ministry of Education and Sports to actually put a ban with immediate effect on all artists from performing in schools. And they did put out a circular on the 1st of August and this is in regard to entertainment and extracurricular activities. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Thank you for joining us one more time. You're welcome. Happy to see you here. Me too, dear. Okay, so now artists have been banned from performing in mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Now, um... To the viewers now, mm. there is something I would uh, I would say as a teacher. There are things that we used to. There are cultures that we've lost. Uh, for example, we had act, we, we used to have our uh, active co-curricular activities in school. Uh, music. Um, my school, Mango SS, uh, in uh, in uh, the first term was uh, music, dance, and drama. Then second term, sports and the like. Now. Um, it was never an emergency to call upon uh, outside entertainment in school, but now it is strange that we are, uh, the standard is, uh, we are compromising on the standards of what a student should be because we are campaigning on, live, on letting students be. Yeah. But involving, um, uh, calling upon um, artists in schools, yes, it could be something good, but we also encourage students to be. Yes. If we really feel they should come in the system, they should come at school. If we really feel we miss them, then these students can mine the songs. You see? I, I'm looking at a school cycle, I'm looking at a school system of allowing students be and let the school be. Mm. You see? We can have the mimes, yes. We've, we can have the talent shows, yes, but just within school to boost all the talent and all the, uh, the activity and all the originality of these students also making initiative, mm. uh, not necessarily bringing in the artists from out. We can do all what artists can do with our originality as students in schools, mm. but not bring them in. On the other hand, uh, if they are to come in, uh, they should be, they should be at our, at our guidelines, at our, you know, at our, we should set minimum standards on how they're supposed to dress, on how they're supposed to, to, to appeal, mm. you see. Not the way they want, because a school zone is not, eh, you know, is not their, their zone, yeah. you see. They're just visitors in here, they're just entertainers, yes, and they've come to uh, get money. So when they're making money and we are, the, we are the ones giving them money, it should not be their way. Mm. It should be our way. So that's what I think. Okay, that's a good one. I'll be getting back to you. But for now, uh, Pastor Sempa, who is actually a social activist, is on standby and we'll be connecting with him via Zoom. Good morning, Pastor Sempa. <laughs> well, good morning. How are you guys doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm here in my kitchen making my coffee ready, watching you guys. Thank Oi. you. It's a great to see TV in the morning. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we are deliberating on the matter in regard to artists being banned uh, from performing and holding concerts in school. So what is your take on that? Um, I, I actually think that uh, it's a, a step in the right direction. Um, as you know, we have been watching uh, our schools turning into nightclubs. Uh, that's really been very sad when we send our children to school and we hope that they would be studying. We find that instead of studying, they are actually at being again attacked by these musicians. Now, but it's a sickness of a society. Our society has denigrated that our music and arts have become perverse and uh, they have become obscene. They are dealing in nudity. The things you see in a, in a nightclub. Now, I don't go to nightclubs, but when I watch movies, I see women stripping their clothes. I see men putting money 
in the women who are taking off their clothes. They're called strip teasers. They are pole dancers. Those are the ones who dance around the poles and they're gyrating. And, and their purpose is sexual stimulation. Hmm. That's why you see them in casino. Casinos is where they get men uh, intoxicated both with sexual acts and alcohol and they get them to give away their money in gambling. Mm. So what sex does or sexual stimulation does is that it, it causes the mind to lose focus. And uh, we've just been through two years of COVID. We're talking about a problem of teenage pregnancy. Uh, I mean, if you remember in the last few months, everybody's teen teenage pregnancy, teenage pregnancy. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Children getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And, and they said, let's open the school. Let's open the schools. The schools will help the children to not to get pregnant. Do you know what? I, I, I cannot understand how bringing Sheba dry humping with her guy and, you know, the Nwajis is doing anything about about uh, stopping teenage pregnancy. Mm. If anything, it's just driving more sexual desires in young people. So I think there's hypocrisy here. I think that there is a, a huge problem we have as a country. And change, this change is just the beginning. Yes. I think we need to, I think we need to see that uh, eh, uh, musicians have, have become decadent. Okay, they now, need to, they need to, given, yes, given the fact that, you know, it's just a few artists, because the videos that we have watched on social media, it's Shiba Karunji, Winnie Nwaji, Kappa Kat, you know, and they are just female artists. Um, there are other artists who haven't, you know, done this, you know, illicit behavior, you know, performing for students in schools. I'm talking about gospel artists and other male artists. So do you think that it's actually fair that the Ministry of Education and Sports bans all artists? I think for now, yes. I think you, you need to understand what's behind. Uh, I know that some other, not everybody is in the conspiracy. But what I want to tell you is that in 2014, when Uganda passed the anti-homosexual law, uh, because there was a lot of propaganda, there was a lot of uh, propaganda that was coming in concerning homosexuality, um, we saw that the Europeans and Americans decided that they would put their money in new NGOs. And these NGOs, and new, they are targeting our young people. And what they are doing, they are, they are trying to use sexual stimulation. And so there's a lot of campaigns under good names such as, oh, drug, uh, we are going to fight drugs, or oh, we are going to do comprehensive sexual education, or oh, we're going to do this. But you know, the first stage in cultural change is the first stage in cultural change has to do with sexual stimulation. Mm. So stage one, they get everybody sexually excited. They get uh, young people stimulated and they tell them, you know, this is normal, dress like this, act like this, talk like this. Because, you know, musicians are our icons. Musicians yeah. are our strong icons. So when, when you don't realize that a lot of the money for musicians today, making videos, making videos, um, uh, concerts. We got, we got concerts whose names I can't mention on the name, mm -hmm. but they're really out to promote. If you look at Nyege Nyege, okay, look at Nyege Nyege. I'll, I'll mention Nyege Nyege because I've been fighting that. When you look at these concerts, they are out to sexualize your young child. They are out to form impressions of what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. They are out to form, this is normal, this is not abnormal. But what, we, what to me, I think Minister of Education has done a good job, but is Uganda Communications Commission's board. Uganda Communications Board is the one who should have, by law, 
a, a content regulation committee which should be active. And that content, com content committee is not active. It's supposed to have a member of the communications board, I think maybe two others, and they incorporate other people. But uh, to me, when music is on television, at breakfast, at lunchtime, when it's in the evening, when, when, when young people are, excuse me, when young people are on, it is a terrible thing. So it is a terrible thing in the evening. You know the music videos? Oh, yes, we it's do. young women shaking up. Yes. Yeah, you, you know music videos. Young people shake. If you look at Shiba's music video, come for my ice cream, bend over. Okay. You know, this is what's shaping the future of our young people. Mm. And we need a straight nation. To me, we need a communications commission to put up a content regulation committee to stop this bombardment in our rooms. Yes. Now, in Pastor our Semper, sitting rooms. Yes, you're at talking Walker about... hours. Mm. You've talked about um, this should have been the mandate by uh, for the Uganda Communications Commissions to actually put a ban on even music videos and, you know, all the music that's put on television because at the end of the day, um, kids and children uh, do watch these videos. But as religious leaders, because you're a pastor, what have you done in your capacity to ensure that, you know, um, these artists and, um, you know, the music videos on TV in one way or another do not... Um, do not to, that children do not get to watch these videos? Um, what I've been doing is I've been campaigning, I've been speaking out to try and educate. Every Saturday I'm at Makere University speaking. But you know, for the last how many years, I've been writing to Minister of Education, I've been speaking to Uganda Communications Commission, um, <clears throat> written laws against pornography. I was on the anti-pornographic committee uh, to be able to try and stop it. And uh, I've written a book um, about this conspiracy, but many of you don't recognize that there's millions of dollars, millions. Uh, uh, we're talking about $40 million that is available to Ugandan musicians to promoters of homosexuality who can go in and, and, and do stimulation. Um, that's a lot of money because normally, hmm. even me when I was in uh, senior five, six, Namiliango, we had difficulty uh, as students hiring these top-notch musicians. You know, they're very expensive. Yes. So these musicians, uh, to pay them, I mean, how much does it cost to pay Sheba? She's a very costly musician, but for her to come for kids on, in their class time, it's not the school. The schools are having trouble. But we have new NGOs, uh, groups like Reach a Hand Uganda. Yes. Uh, what they're doing is that they are, co they are forming partnerships with, uh, with uh, these European and American social engineers who don't believe in, in gender of men and women. They think in 23 genders. They think young people should be sexually active. They call it comprehensive sexual education. We're surrounded. And even now, as we talk, we are having a bill at the East African community where they're trying to make a law to bring or oh, make this normal in the school. Homosexuality, uh, gender confusion, and, and, and promotion there. It, it, we're having a big fight. So all of these issues is, are going on now. Uganda is under attack. So we need people praying. We need people speaking. We need to be on television. Thank you so much for hosting me. Uh, I got a t-shirt. I came up with a brand of Straight Nation because this is the idea that uh, we want to raise a group of young people that are not crooked, bent, or queer, but we are straight. We are we are not doing obscenities. Hmm. So everybody should come on board, as they say. It takes a village to raise a child. We need teachers, need t broadcasters, we need mothers. Everybody should be on the board. Yes. We'll be getting back to you, uh, Pastor Sempa, and you know, as we continue this conversation. So we do hope that you actually stay online.
Thank well, join you. okay, thank you so much. Joining me again is Sophia Nyanzi and is a parent and social activist. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks this morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, you found, you found us in the middle of this conversation in yeah. regard to artists being banned uh, from performing and holding concerts in schools. So we'd love to get your take on this. Well, um, I think this raising a child, like Pastor Sempa has said, is, uh, it takes a village. So ideally, I think um, it is supposed to be a sort of like a partnership. Um, parent, teachers, yeah, and well, primarily parents, then teachers, and also society. So when artists show up at school dressed the way they are, you know, it questions the values of these other two entities which yeah. is parents and the school, you see, because the school let the, the, the artist show up and let the artist actually perform the way they did. So what message are they showing to these kids? Because these kids actually look up to them as role models. Absolutely. So if, I, if, if my child is in that school, I want my child to, be, um, to carry forward with the morals that I'm trying to, you know, to instill in them at home. So if they get to school and that is you know, disorganized, it becomes difficult for us to work as, as a group, you see. Mm. Um, do I think that the artists, banning the artists is the, big, the bigger problem, the, the problem that we actually have here? Not necessarily. I feel like the morals really have to primarily start at, at home, you know, and the school has to also take on. The artists should, you know, deal with whatever it is that they have found already implemented. Mm. So was it a good thing? Yes and no. Yes okay. and no. So Before am, we get to the, the yes and no, yes. I'd like to ask you the same question that I actually uh, posed to Pastor Semper. Do you think that it's fair that the Ministry of Education and Sports bans all artists? Because this includes gospel artists who, have, who don't uh, put up you know, the, the explicit content or you know, dance seductively or suggestively. It also puts um, even the male artists in the same position and they are not culprits to this. Mm. So do you think it's actually right that they ban all artists? Mm. Me or let's start with you, Miss Ellen. Now uh, there is something I would I uh, would think about. Um, I think uh, the ministry should also uh, put guidelines or should I uh, uh, should draw uh, a concept of uh, what uh, or minimum standards of what um, uh, of what uh, the entertainers of what the the artists should be in schools because uh, on the other hand. Uh, the students also look up to them as significant as significant others you see so they also believe in them so we are also looking at another fact how can we use these entertainers as agents of change mm. uh, we can set standards the government can set standards uh, minimum standards or even give them a code of conduct or even give them a certain content that can help because uh, as pastor Semper said uh, raising a child takes the whole eh, takes village. the whole village yes now what is the role of the entertainment in raising children? We need that. Uh, let, the Ministry of uh, let the Ministry of Education have that put in place, their role. What is their role to play? For example, if someone came on stage and they're saying that uh, uh, it's not their children and uh, it's uh, parents supposed to take care of their, their children or parent them, and uh, the artist is coming in with that concept that this is not my child, parent your child, then I'm, I'm here to entertain. Mm. Then I think, uh, we are not on the same page. As mm. she said, we are questioning. Are we really on the same page? You see, uh, let, the, let the entertainers also be part of the, part of the grooming. Mm. Because if they are influential, we really believe they can do a good part. So uh, let the ministry draw standards, not, only, uh, not necessarily uh, putting everything off, but this is a challenge. As Pastor Semper said still, um, Yes, the perversion, the perversive uh, world is very fast, is so, so fast. And uh, if these students are looking up to these people, we can engage them to also uh, look at intervention measures for the good of the, the students. Uh, Ms. Sophia, you actually talked about you don't think, you think that it's right, and on the other hand, you have, you know, your reservations. What are those reservations you, uh, you have in regard to this uh, direction or directive? Okay, because for me, indecency cuts across so many things. So it cuts across, uh, one, of course, the dress code, you know, two, the music, the type of music, you see. Um, when you said that the schools do, uh, I don't know, uh, in, you know, invite gospel artists. Yeah, some do invite, yeah, gospel, some do invite artists. gospel artists. So on one hand, you have gospel artists, 
you know, on the other hand, you have what kind of music did uh, the, well, the ministry termed it as, what's the secular, word? Secular, secular. Yeah, okay. That's not the one I was going that's for. That's not the one, yeah, yes. But okay. yes, they did, they did, you know, you know, like, you know, the kind of music that I don't want, that influences the child to want to act upon the lyrics. Yes. You see? I mean, you, uh, so what message still, even if the artist is dressed, you know, uh, in the mm -hmm. most modest way, but the music itself, what kind of entertainment is that, that you're trying to, you know, the direction you're trying to show the kids that, okay, this is how we can, we can you know, we can entertain you. So on one end, I feel like um, it's a bad thing because, um, yes, rather it's a good thing, yes, ban them. And because the music and also the, the, the outfits and all this other, the message that is sending, sometimes some of those lyrics shouldn't be, I, I mean, mm. the kids are going to hear it anyway, but I would rather if they're not listening it, you know, they're not getting it from my school. You see, mm. let them go find it somewhere else, but I'm not going to encourage this while I can. You see, so from one end, I feel like, yeah, it's a good thing they banned them because that we should be able to protect the child's innocence for as long as we can. Mm. And on the other hand, no, because you see, they are not the primary reason, the, rather the primary issue here. The issue here comes down to these two entities, the parents and the teachers, and the morals that we are trying as a partnership, trying to instill into these kids. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Elon, Sheba Karunji, one of the artists in the, uh, in, that we are talking about in this conversation said that it's not upon her to actually instill morality in your children. As a parent, do you think that it's a, you earlier talked about what Pastor Sepa said that it takes a village, but do you think that a, an artist is actually, uh, should be in position to instill more morals in, in your child? Um, depending, um, depending, depending. And now you cannot give out what you are not given. That is first thing. So yeah. if uh, Sheba didn't get that <laughs> from home, mm. there is no way she can really campaign for, uh, for that. But most of us got these things from home. And that's why we are really desperate that yes, that's why we're even strict that this should end. Uh, she was talking about something that um, it's wrong coming dressed decently and speaking otherwise. Mm. Yes, I kept, uh, I still say, let schools be. Um, if she was, uh, actually, this is also another challenge. In my spirit, in my mind, I was wondering, why of all artists that, why of all things that uh, uh, schools feel they should bring entertainers at, at school? That is one thing. Then secondly, I was, I was also wondering, um, are we, what is going wrong? Because it's like, students are taking the lead in this. Yes. Mm. Students decide. Yes. And, and teachers react. Yeah. Uh, students react and parents react. I'm wondering, the teachers, the schools, the parents, uh, the religious leaders, where are we? It seems like eh, yeah. the, the children are taking us on. Mm. That is wrong. Let's position students where they're supposed to be. And when, uh, when we give them the right morals, yes, they'll also feel it is good. But it's now our, um, Pastor Sempa was talking about the, the COVID-19 and the um, and what happened? Some of us who do counseling in schools, this is what happened after the COVID-19. We have a lot of uh, pornography around. Mm. Uh, because of the phones, these children went into pornography yeah. big time. Yeah. We have a lot of masturbation. When, it, when we go to schools, it is a very, it's, it's a mess, you see? Yes. Now, it's like bringing these guys at school is promoting. Uh, it's like, uh, you're taking us too fast to the new normal. It's like, we want to accept the perversion in school. It's like we are embracing it positively, mm. which is wrong. Uh, yeah. So if Sheba feels she's not part of this, uh, she's not part of grooming uh, our children, mm. then I don't think she, she deserves being part of us, you see? Because she's responsible in a way. She's a mother. I, I think she's a mother, isn't it? No, she's, no, not, she's, not, she's not yet a mother. She's not a mother. Oh, this is wrong now. If she's not yet a mother, then she doesn't feel what we feel, you see? Okay, <laughs> okay but okay, we'll get into that again because um, it kind of, you know, give it your submission. It looks like Shiba Karunji because when you talk about uh, she's not a parent, then she doesn't know what you go through as parents. It, because her saying that she's not responsible for the morality of your children, at the end of the day, she's actually hired by the uh, school administration to come into school. 
the school administration does not give her guidelines or restrictions on the dress code or on you know what content um, to present or perform to the students um, talking about her songs because some of them are explicit so don't you think it's actually on uh, on the ministry of not the ministry but the school, the school. administration? No, it's absolutely. Briefly, the school. before you we see. bring it past uh -huh. Let me tell you, the problem first of all is with the school, but also with the school with the school board, with also the school head teacher, with also the careers, uh, the, the the counseling and guidance department, with the senior ladies in that school. Mm -hmm. There is something they could be promoting, as Pastor Semper said. There could be an indirect force for mm -hmm. them uh, to be talking about something. There is something you talked about, uh, a school in Nansana, someone who talked about a school in Nansana, mm. when we were, when in we were, Wakiso. Uh -huh, in Wakiso, uh, whereby they bring uh, artists on every weekend, you see, and I'm wondering, is it, couldn't this be a movement that we are not aware of, that is sponsoring such? It may not be, let's uh, do research, it may be beyond a school, it may be more than what we think a school is doing, but there is a movement behind yeah. it. Hmm. She That's made a business okay, woman, so really. <laughs> Yes, before we come to you, Mr. Sophia, let's day. talk to uh, Pastor Martin Semper for, for him to actually give us his opinion in regard to what Sheba Karunji said. So, Pastor Martin Semper, Sheba Karunji said that she is no, in no way responsible for, you know, upholding the morals and, you know, the values of children, that it's upon their parents and the, student, uh, the school administrations of the schools that she performs to, to actually do these things. I'm surprised. I was watching Shiba just a few weeks ago when she was crying on social media and she was saying, oh, I went to perform and uh, in this very respectable man, a family man, a man with values, and then this man came into my car and was trying to sexual harass me. Oh, this is so terrible. Why is this happening? People should stop it. And then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> now, the same person, the same person, Sheba, Sheba, when she herself is now the perpetrator of sexualization of our children, okay? She's coming in shaking, twerking in class. This is what it is. She's twerking in class. She's telling everybody, do like I do, be like me. And then she's bending over dry humping her music partner. This is unacceptable. This is wrong. So she cannot have it both ways. She can't say, oh, I'm expecting society to be moral. I'm expecting some adults to act like adults. And then when she herself had the opportunity to act as an adult, she is not. She's acting like a prostitute. So, and, and, to, and to make claims that, you know what, I'm not here to create morality. We're not asking you to teach morality. We are asking you not to bring your sexual immorality to our children. That's what we are saying. As, as my sister shared there, we're having a lot of problems. Uganda has we have financial problems. Parents have school fees problems. We've spent two years, two years of kids at home. We have pornographic problems. Kids are sexually addicted. I talk to teachers in many school day counselors. They tell me they have a, kids have a problem of addiction. And now we've also been following an issue of teenage pregnancy. And everybody's a teenage pregnancy, teenage pre every NGO, every, every funding group, teenage pregnancy. Now, and we're, what do we open the schools? Open, and they've been saying, open the schools, watch, watch, watch carefully, so that we can, schools are a protective measure from teenage pregnancy. Is this, is this teenage pregnancy protection? No, this is promotion. So I think uh, Sheba is being a hypocrite. Secondly, uh, the fact that she's not married, and I, tell these musicians because i was debating with cindy yesterday she's the president of uganda musicians association cindy is married cindy has two children and cindy was sharing that look because i'm a mother and because i am married there's some it. things i cannot do on stage and we must be age appropriate there are things for nightclubs there are things for past midnight and there are things that you cannot be able to do in school so apparently, if we don't have the arm of the law to restrain people like Sheba, 
we will have problems. And the other thing I want to say is 90% of the musicians are on drugs. 90% of these musicians are drug abusers, okay? I'm not saying that in a bad way, and this is the first time I'm bringing it out. But if you have people who are on drugs, they are the ones who are coming into schools, and they are the ones who are performing. They are not normal. They are not in their normal mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've made, we've made them celebrities. They're like the Madonnas. They're like the who. And I think that that's another solution we need to come up with. We yes. need to begin to incubate good musicians. Mm -hmm. We need Uganda Communications Commission. In the same way we have uh, rural electrification. In the same way we have uh, Operation Wealth Creation. We need to have a fund that definitely set aside to incubate good music. Because yes. right now, how does musician yeah. come? Somebody puts money into them, a manager, and uh, they, they show off their bodies, and that's how they make it big. But I will, I will share it now. You guys need to know that a lot of the money right now, free money in the city, is LGBT money, yeah. homosexual promotion yeah. money. And because of that, many musicians, sportsmen, cultural icons are being taken in and they are being groomed. You are beginning to see musicians who are transgender, okay? Neither boy nor girl. Yeah. And you know, music is the way because music is a bypass. You don't think through. As you mm. can see the kids in that video, they are just singing the songs. Did they learn the songs in the class? Yeah. No, yes. they Master learn Simba. them at home. They learn them in the city, in yeah. the sitting room, in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening. So I think we see Ministry of Education has taken action, but we, we desperately need yeah. Uganda Communications Commission, Minister of ICT, Chris Bariomunsi, is not doing his job. Pastor he Semper. needs to do more. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. Now, uh, getting back to the artists as well as the music, now that they have banned uh, the artists with immediate effect, much as you know, they will be uh, following up and seeing how this uh, gets into effect. Does the music or, you know, the music, do we ban the music as well? Does the Ministry of Education and Sports ban the music as well? Because I'll tell you something, that during the dances in school, even when there are no performing artists, this same music mm. is actually played in school. So do they ban the music as well or it's just the artists? I thank you for that question. I think what is, you're asking the question that the answer is we need to actually have music literacy. We need to have music literacy to be able to separate obscenities in distances from good music. And I don't think anyone is teaching that. Um, I was an entertainment prefect in Namiliango for 1986, 1988. It was my job to choose which music, which films, now, there are students who bring blue movies, pornographic movies, as student leaders, because that's going to get the crowd going. So even within those issues, we need to engage. For the young people, we need to give them a course in music literacy. It's got to be part of their skills. How do you distinguish between good film and bad film, good series and bad series? Then we need to look at uh, the, the, the entertainment prefect regulations who has access to our children. This is extremely important because parents are not there. Parents have given mandate to the to teacher and the administration to make sure they protect their children. It is criminal to expose young people to early sexualization. It's criminal, it's wrong. Listen, sex for anybody below 18 years old is defilement. A yeah. lot of people are in jail in, in Uganda's prison because of defilement. We, uh, and there's a spread of HIV. We have yeah. a lot of problems. So there is need to actually review the entire entertainment system mm. because it's not helping our young people. Yo, we used to have Father Grimes in Namasagali, okay? Which is where the Blue Three people came from. Father Grimes and this Namasagali was greatly known as a school that promotes talent. Okay, many of our current artistic people have come from there. They used to have school dances, but they were not obscene. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, they used creative. to have uh, 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 artist, yeah, artistic, 
artistic promotion, plays at the National Theater. We need to incubate the actual to become content creators, not content, content consumers. Mm -hmm. And we need to create new heroes. In the same way we gave money to Rocco, the same way the government said, look, we have a desperate situation. Rocco is going to go down. We need to give money to Rocco. We need to put aside the fund of billions of shillings to be able to incubate musicians so that they can contribute to national development. Mm -hmm. While we are singing, talking abstinence, being faithful, we're talking about no corruption. What are musicians singing? Corruption. We need to link music to national Develop development yes. goals. Mm -hmm. We need to see musicians promoting agriculture, tourism, uh, excellence in education. Sheba needs to be told, and you know, there are people who cannot, they don't do things because they can be, it's inside them. They have to be regulated. The last thing I would like to see, I want to do, I want to do a Sunday regularly where I gather these musicians and we have a worship and we be able to speak to them because often on social media, I tell them, I tell Denzo, uh, Denzo, I said, Shiba, Shiba, uh, uh, you need to get a wife. Uh, you need to get a husband. You are running around. You have grown. You have money. Eh? Okay. I don't know who tells Shiba to get married. But we, we need people who, to tell these young people. So I'm planning to have a, cele what, they call them celebrity Sundays, where we gather them and uh, minister to them and get elders like you, uh, my people who are there to come and speak to them. And then uh, the other one is protect our children from this homosexual agenda. There is millions of dollars in Kampala City, which is being given mm. to musicians, uh, sports people, sports group, filmmakers, uh, for the purposes of impressing and stimulating our young people and taking them into homosexuality. Let me make this final point. You may ask me, how does sexual stimulation of a boy and a girl lead to homosexuality? One, it's never a man and a man in the first place. It's always a man and a woman doing their sexual thing. Then everybody gets excited and then they take you to a man and a man and a woman and a woman. That's how all those pornographic movies yes. are. So this is stage one. Uganda is under attack. What they are doing in Europe and America, where boys are saying they are girls, they are, and then girls are saying they are boys, is what they want to put us here. Let's not take this slowly. This is a huge issue, and I thank Minister of Education for starting out. Now we need to go more. We need to go to ICT. We need to go uh, Media Council. We need to go more musicians, and we need to go more funding of new music or even better music. Mm. There is a fund of music for musicians to make good music. Otherwise, they tell me, Pastor, when you make a good video where girls are not naked, you don't make money. Okay, Pastor. But when Semper. the girls are taking off, I mean, look at these guests. Look at the guests in the studio. Look how they are dressing. They are, they look wonderful, and I think I really want to appreciate them. They look beautiful, but now our, and they are respectable. And when they talk their points, even you, I really respect you and I admire you. But our musicians, they dress okay, as Pas if they are in the, in the bedroom. So we need, we need changes. Thank you. Pastor Semper, we'll be getting back to you in a bit. Uh, we do hope that you stay online. Uh, Miss Sophia, I'd like to ask you now, let's bring in the role of parents, you know, in instilling morals and values in their children. We could put the blame on the artists, but yeah. remember back at home, you allow your children to watch these music videos, yeah. to watch these films. So what are your We equip parents? them with gadgets mm -hmm. and we have no time out for gadgets, you know. Um, I think that the, for me, I feel like, uh, like he has said, <coughs> Uganda, or generally the world, is under attack. And as parents, we're not playing our role. We're giving these kids phones, and social media is an epidemic, but TikTok is another mm -hmm. epidemic. And TikTok is telling kids that you can, you know, express yourself. It's okay for you to express yourself. And it's, it's telling them, oh, look at this musician, they are like this. You know, look at this celebrity, they are like this. You can be like this if you dress like this, if you sound like this, if you twerk like this. And I feel like as parents, we need to come back to um, what is this that we're trying to um, instill in our kids and and really be uh, be very 
be, a, be about that action, you know, be about, you know, these phones, understand that there's actually damage to it. A friend of mine recently told me when I was speaking to her about this conversation, about the phone issue, because I feel like uh, we're we are exposing our kids too early on and letting them, you know, have these gadgets and letting them explore the globe, you know, for whatever information, for whatever, um, uh, you know, relief that they can find out there, you know, for their self-esteem. And she said to me, yeah, but you know, we're in the dot com, mm -hmm. we're in the dot com, you know, era, era right mm -hmm. now. And so we have to move with it. So I wonder, are we as parents trying so hard to fit into the modern world? Is that what we're trying to, you know, to do? Or have we completely, have we completely lost the plot, that the plot is actually to raise really responsible children? And then are we then later on going to start there, sit there and then be complaining about, oh, my child is, you know, the school spot the child, the artist spot the child, the everyone spot the child. But at home, I'm letting my child have freedom of everything and be exposed to everything. I feel like, yes, right now it starts with the, with the parents. With the parents. And then we have to regulate what is right and what is not right and be about the consequences and be about what is, you know, be serious about this stuff. Hmm. Not sit back and say, oh, you know, mwana na mugamba. That's not going to work. Yes. Now, you know? still in regard to the role of parents, Miss Elon, because um, artists go to school and perform this music and, you know, put up mm. all these kinds of dances. However, there are people that are arguing that this, that maybe they're using artists as scapegoats. And the reason they say this is because during holidays, they usually, um, holiday makers bashes, there's usually, you know, buzz tennis awards, all those. And parents actually enable this kind of behavior yeah. in a way that That's they true. give their children money to go for these concerts. What do they expect? Artists are going to, you know, show up actually dressed the same way they dress as artists. Now, uh, as she said, uh, there is what we call ex escapism for parents. Parents are failing to do their role and to do aggressive parenting and to do a crisis parenting and they're leaving everything to the world to parent. TikTok has parented, social mm. media has parented. Uh, I'm organizing a workshop uh, 23rd and 20, 24th and 26th, and this is my response. It's in regard to youths, uh, boys and girls, and this is my response. Parents are not even excited to pay that money for the good of their children to, have, uh, to, to, to improve their, their livelihoods. But it is strange. They will pay all the money, they will pay all it takes, they will buy all the clothes to help to, to, to see that their children are in entertainment. Uh, it, we are dealing with a, with a hurting society. We are dealing with parents who are disappointed, um, mothers, fathers who are disappointed. And what are they doing? According to what I've gone through, I won't allow my, ch my child to go through this. I should mm. give my children whatever they, are, the, whatever they want. Now, uh, it is strange. We are looking at that other side as if we are, um, we are helping children that way. I keep telling uh, parents that the more we able children is the more we disable them. Yeah. I'm wondering, when they were growing up, were they given, uh, were they gi were they given all that freedom? But they're now proud of who they are because they were regulated, there were regulations. Uh, so parents, I'm here to call upon wherever you are, um, let's help these children through. Um, children are in a jam, children are confused. For us who do this work in schools, we are overwhelmed yeah. actually. Yeah. You become so emotional when you're looking at a child struggling with masturbation and yeah. this, this child is struggling, you know, I don't know, whenever I'm masturbating, I'm hurting. These children are guilty in them because they've copped on, uh, they've got onto track with uh, some behavior. They don't know how to go about, about uh, going out of it. Now, if we are promoting all this in school, that we are, it is free to have any musician, you know, I don't think we are helping these students. I would call upon government to go back to the values we had in the, in the first place. We had good entertainment in school when we were growing up. Let's emphasize this for the child to be a child, for the student to be a student, you see? And just in case we are incorporating, like Pastor Semper said, just in case we are incorporating this, let's, yeah. let them, let's incorporate the, the outside world our way, the school way in school, not bringing the values out yeah. into school. That's what I would think. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Pastor Semper, 
as uh, as you give yes. us your final remarks in one minute i would love you you know to get to tell us do you think that this ban on artists performing in school will actually uh, solve the issue of immorality in schools and in children and as well as you giving us your final remarks in one minute yeah when a vehicle's tire is uh, broken you need to stop the car so that you can see what's wrong, remove the tire, and then put on another one. So the fact that uh, the Minister of Education has seen that it has uh, the right, because in the past, they had, uh, if you do recall, they had, uh, they had said that they were not involved in that. So that was a previous administration. But I appreciate the new permanent secretary Minister of Education, she said, no, this is our docket. We have a mandate. So the fact that she uh, has come up as well as the leadership and said, no, this is us. We need to stop it. Then let's see how to do it right. I think it's step number one. Step number two is consulting stakeholders because we are dealing with a tragedy. Excuse me. We're dealing with a tragedy right now. And this tragedy of... I mean, the music industry has become a pimps. I don't know if you know pimps. Pimps are people who buy women and use the women as prostitutes. Uh, pimps, if you see them in the movie, they dress white suits. Yes. And their job is to get beautiful girls and traffic them. So yeah. in trafficking, the, the people, the young, the beautiful girls, they, they make money. So... Uh, and the music is about, you know, humping and grumping. That's where we are today. But so December. in the midst of a, uh, a culture that has uh, fallen, we need to say, okay, how do we bring renewal? We need to choose which musicians, we need to put regulations, and then we align musicians who can, who can teach our young people goals that have to do with our national goals patriotism, faith in God, character, no corruption, sexual abstinence, because we don't want teenage pregnancy. So we need to align music to national goals. Then finally, we need now to go into creating new music and new art. And I, I, I keep putting this on again. We are doing this when we are surrounded by enemies of our people, we have well-funded enemies. And I'm crying out to everybody to know, Uganda, ever since we decided and said that homosexuality, mm. gay marriages are not for us, we became enemy number one of all these Europeans and American countries. Mm. So they are putting money into different projects. They take it through sports, they take it through music. They take it through nyege nyege. Master Semper. They take it through making films. Um, so we need, let me finish this point. We need to realize we are at war. We are at war for the future of our children. We cannot just think it's going to work okay. We need to put every mom, every dad, every leader. We must say, you no, know, we are in the midst of a culture war. Let us pray. Let us do what we can to help our people. Finally, I want to give my phone number. If there are parents who want to invite me or schools that want to invite me to speak about straight nation, those who are struggling with masturbation, that's what I've been speaking about for the last 30 years. Uh, so my number is 772-641028. It's on WhatsApp, 772-641028. And right now I'm building a camp here in my home I'm going to go right now mining the tractor because we're putting up a, a play area so we can bring young people over during holidays to have camps and have a chance of helping them get the, the dirt out of their minds. So thank you for a chance to share. I send blessings to everybody, parents, teachers, administrators, even my fellow co-panelists. Thank well, you very much. Thank you so much, much for joining us in Sunrise I see this morning. Well, uh, back to you, uh, Ms. Sophia. I would like to get your final remarks in regard to artists being banned from schools and if you actually think that this move will help, uh, you know, in upholding morality um, in students or in children. I just to, I feel like as parents, we should try as much as possible to protect our kids' innocence 
for as long as we can. And that means being very much aware of the surroundings that they are in. So that is school, what they're listening to, what they're dressing like, all that um, needs to, we need to put that, put that in account in what it is that we're trying to you know, develop and have tomorrow as a responsible child. And we should instill proper boundaries. And these boundaries should cut across to even the schools to where we're taking them to if we're indulging in, uh, you know, um, indulging in what are the sleepovers, all that. Because I might want to do this at home, but then wherever it is that I'm exposing my child to, might not really uphold the same morals. So yes. we need to instill this, and we need to remember that you know whatever it is that we're doing and exposing, we're either going to uphold tomorrow and be very proud of tomorrow, or we're really going to regret it tomorrow. Yes. So as a parent, um, I think our plan should be to protect our kids' innocence as much as we can and to understand that you know by by giving them freedom is really not exactly freedom it's actually trying to create we are creating a lot of mental issues for them for later on that we'll still have to deal with and then we can't sit back and then start crying like you know you know my child got spot i took him to this school or that school or the other artist yes. in terms of um the artists that they are bringing to school again comes down to morals and what it is that the values that i have instilled in my child and as a parent hold because i'm not going to sign up to to pay the school to give me you know to bring this particular artist to the to the school to listen for my child to be exposed to something that I'm already letting them you know stopping them from listening to at home so as a an entire stakeholders all the stakeholders have to be you know involved. have to come yes they have to be involved and the Ministry of Education and UCC have to take this a notch higher and get into social media now we need to get into social media in terms of TikTok and what it is that we are we are allowing and exposing and you know what is what is okay you know so parents teachers minister of education and it's really sad that they we needed minister of education to do this for schools to 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 be able to say okay maybe we're doing this wrong where are the values like she said it's like the kids are raising themselves and all of us are just, you know, falling in line. We are following what the kids are doing. When it should be the other way around. It should be the parents, the teachers, and the government, and all the stakeholders. So yes. my last words, or my last remarks are, we need to protect their innocence as much as we can. Because we're either going to regret this later on, or we're going to be very proud of what it is that we have, you know, we have raised. I thank you so much yeah. for that. Uh, Ms. Elon, would you like, would like to get your final remarks? Uh, first of all, I'm very happy that our Ministry of Education came in to own the project that, yes, they regulate what uh, education with our, at whichever level is in their hands. Yes, I was happy as a parent, as a teacher, yes, I felt, yes, uh, government is coming in aggressively and um, now we still call upon parents on board. It is not only the role of schools. Uh, mm -hmm. When it was COVID time, parents were overwhelmed and they were, tell, tell, well, they were saying that uh, let uh, children go back to school because you cannot handle them anymore. Now, um, I still call upon government, the way it's been aggressively uh, campaigning to stop such, to also campaign for psychologists in schools. Yes. Uh, every school should have uh, psychologists. The way it's attacked this, this is why I keep campaigning for the Ministry of Education. We mm -hmm. need psychologists on board to cater for what students are going through because, yes, we are, we feel we, we, it's like as if we are adamant, but students have real issues and big mm -hmm. issues because we are no longer looking at them as uh, children, but they're young adults, you yes. see. Uh, can you imagine, uh, I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I'm older, but sharing, uh, being, uh, having a young adult who will think, think alike in some, in some things, it's a challenge. So I call upon Ministry of Education, the way it's been aggressive in this, uh, yes, I also call upon Ministry to, uh, employ, to, uh, to make a law of psychologists in schools such that we help the students out with whatever they are facing. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for joining us this morning on Sunrise at Sea. Thanks for having us. Well, I've been joined by uh, three amazing people, just like I've been mentioning it, you know, from the word go. Uh, I've been joined by Pastor Martin Sempa, who is a social activist. I've been joined by Miss Elon Chibumulo, who is a teacher, a psychologist, and also a parent. And I've been joined by Sophia, Miss Sophia Nyanzi Mulindwa, who is um, a parent as well as a social activist. And they have been weighing in uh, on the matter in regard to the Ministry of Education and Sports. Uh, putting It's actually a temporary ban on artists 
artists performing or holding concerts in schools. We'll definitely be bringing to you, you know, um, or whatever will be transpiring in regard to this ban. And finally, the final communication from the Ministry of Education and Sports. That is all we had for you on the segment of the Twitter Jabs. Thank you for staying with us and keep watching Sunrise at Sea.